Welcome back and Happy New Year. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chris Talley, and welcome back to Courtside. Coach, it's been a while here since we've been on the set. You've basically played half your season, but a Happy New Year, and welcome back from your trip to Florida, and uh, Happy 2020. Happy, happy New Year, Coach. Lots of uh, big show today, big production. Uh, let's, let's get rolling here. Yeah, we got a lot of games to talk about. Uh, so last time we talked, we were only one and one. We just had the tip off with the CV South teams. Yeah. Now here we are in 2020. You've played over half your season. You're now staying at seven and five. Uh, if district started today, you'd be the 12th seed. Just real quick, what a whirlwind it's been since the, that opening weekend, yeah? That was actually the word I was going to use. Uh, yeah, we got to dig back in the memory bank here and, and kind of remember some of those games. But, you know, like high school basketball is every year, uh, it, there's peaks and valleys, and, you know, it, it, it's a roller coaster, and, um, you know, that's, that's why we do it. All right, so before you guys left for break, you had a really tough span of pack games where you played three divisional opponents, yeah. Norristown, Methacton, Boyertown, and you went one and two. And really a hard-fought game down at Norristown. It was, I don't think the score ever got anything was ever more than up five or six points in the entire game, just back and forth all night against Norristown. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a gut check time. You know, that is always a tough place to play. Uh, they're tough kids, um, you know, Coach Johnson and his staff, they do a great job down there. And, uh, you know, we were lucky to get out of there with a win, to be honest. And we talked about that was your third game of the year, but that was their, their first game of the year. Yeah. And you kind of missed all maybe a little bit of that first game jitters, you know, down the stretch, you know, who are we going to call and that sort of thing. But as of right now, you're going to play them this week, and they're now a, a savvy team, and they, they've really got things rolling down at Narstown, too, after that, too. Yeah, that, you know, they're – very sophomore junior heavy they don't have a lot of seniors they lost all five starters from last year so first game of the season for them you know we were able to um you know close down the stretch which they weren't able to do and you know we'll take it so that got you guys the two and one on the year and then we yeah. brought in here Methact, and they now their gym's open they're going to have some home games here but they were on the road all in december yeah and we talked about Methact and what a tough team they're going to be not just here in the pack, but in district play and in state basketball game. Boy, and it was a really close game. Uh, you found yourself up, actually, a point in the in the fourth quarter, too. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, if you were a high school basketball fan and, and you attended that game, you um, you got your money's worth for sure. And, uh, yeah, credit to, to Mathacton. They came in here and, um, you know, probably – uh, sick of playing on the road for mm -hmm. the for the entire season at that point, but um, you know they were able to do more of the little things at the end and, and close. And it you off. got a big second half from Medeiros right there with the dunk. We've seen a couple threes here in the highlights, but really just kind of gave you guys an opportunity to have a chance to to win that basketball game with them. Yeah, he had a uh, if I remember a thirteen point third quarter okay. it, uh, on his own. So that um, you know was great to see for him, and he was shooting the ball with confidence and. You know, it, it's not an easy task covering Woodward and mm -hmm. and then, you know, trying to score on Woodward. So, uh, you know, for him to, to step up in that third quarter was great to see. And we've seen a lot of guys throughout this break make contributions. Yeah. And, and really the kind of the one mainstay you really say and you see him really doesn't leave the floor for you a lot of it this year has been Scrocky for you a yeah. little bit. Like he's really that floor general for you out there. Control and tempos. We saw him make a nice little highlight there at the end of that. Talk about Scrocky from where he was last year on this team to, to what his role is now as a junior on this squad. Uh, I'm glad you you brought that up because yeah. I, I think he uh, he's one of those players that flies under the radar. Yep. And um, you know, the, from how we play, we ask a lot from a point guard. And 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 Scrocky has you know he's stepped into this role as a junior. And um, we couldn't be happier with his progress. You know, last year you asked, uh, he, he was a sophomore. He started a bunch of games. He was more of a, a role player, get the ball over half court, don't turn it over, shoot when you're open. And uh, this year it, it, it couldn't be the opposite. It's, uh, you know, get to, the, get to the rim, get to the foul line, hit open shots, defend their point guard, don't turn the ball over, get nine rebounds. Yeah. Like he's... He's asked to do a lot, and he's he's answered the bell. I think when you're going and watching this Ram team, you see the names like Medeiros and Kovaleski, but mm -hmm. I think this that Scrocky name is the more of, like, you're just, wow, you know, like, you really got to pay attention, and other coaches got to pay attention to his yeah. progressing basketball game, too. Yeah, he, he's no longer uh, a facilitator, yep. and he's not just a guy that is out there trying to just blend in. 
which which he's done sure, right, he yeah. did last year, which as a sophomore I probably would too. Uh, but this year he's uh, he's he's attacking the rim. His mid range jump shot is yep. as good as anybody in, in the league. Uh, he defends, but but more importantly, he doesn't turn the ball over. You know, the, he, he's almost getting that Ganias. You know, like he's yeah. turning into that. You know, like you almost want to give him more of the reins and yeah. take some more shots, go a little bit, even be more aggressive. You can see that the progression of him as a as an outsider from a coaching staff to a point guard you've had from the past to what you have now too. Yep, and and he's shooting the ball with confidence. You know, last year his shots were limited, and it was almost like. You had to be perfect, and mm -hmm. when he missed, it was magnified because he's getting two shots a game. Yeah. Where this year he doesn't have that pressure where every time I, I shoot, I have to make it. And, you know, he's hit some big shots, and, you know, we'll talk about one of the big shots in, in a couple segments here. All right, so we have here one more game, and, and, and a tough a tough game to go on the road. You went down to Boratown yep. and just a low-scoring battle out there, and you guys really came up a little bit short down to Boratown. Always tough play, but once again, it was like, you can make excuses, hey, we're leaving for Florida, yeah, blah, blah, no. blah, blah, blah. But you just guys didn't have it that night against Boyertown. No. You know, preseason, summer, Boyertown is one of those teams that, you know, as a coaching staff, we felt that had a lot of pieces to be successful, you know, within the district and our league this year. Uh, last year, they were all sophomores. Yep. And, you know, they pretty much all played varsity and, and kind of took their lumps in preparation for this year. So from a coaching standpoint, did I – uh, want to go in there and, and perform a little bit better for sure, but I wasn't surprised at all that uh, it was a tough game and, and it came down to the wire. Yeah, it's one of those teams, and once again, they, pl they play some zone, they do a little bit of different things out there, and if you kind of struggle shooting the ball, get some turnovers, you know, you, you start to almost feel bad about yourself a little bit, and you kind of saw that a little bit with you guys in the second half down there too. Yeah, and credit to Coach Ludwig and his staff, they were able to get so you already pace. seen playing in the zone. Yep. Uh, you know, they want to play a particular way, and they were able to force that upon us. We, we were never able to get the pace that we want. And, um, you know, we talked to the kids early in the year. If you see our scores, there's a bunch of two-point wins, two-point losses, one-point yeah. wins. Um, so we very – we could have really gone – you know, 3-0 and in that stretch, yeah. or we, we could have gone 0-3 in that stretch. So, um, you know, it, it's those little things that we didn't do well enough against Boyertown. And the other one we need to talk about, and there are no highlights, but with PJP, yeah. the local rival, you guys found a way to win a game. And, and they look like the team to be, maybe to beat on that other half of the division out there. Um, just another hard-fought hard basketball game, a couple yeah. possessions here and there. And that could have been an L for you guys, but that, that afternoon you found a way to win. Yeah, Again, another closely contested game. I think we're up nine or ten late. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the thing about Pope John Paul is they shoot the ball really well. Yep. So, you know, they're one or two shots away from, you know, a, a two-point um, closing that gap to two or one, uh, which is what happened. But, um, again, we, we were able to make some more of the, the little things happen at the end and fortunate to get a win. You heard a lot of people that was there for the game. You, you played a lot like it was like a Saturday afternoon yeah. game. Not, not a lot of energy in the gym or whatever, but you have a lot of these Saturday afternoon yeah. games. It's a message you have to convey to these kids that, hey, you know, we, we step up, not ready to go, or we step up or we not ready to go. Boy, these district rankings can fall. Your aspirations of pack playoffs can really go out the window in a hurry, too. Yeah, whether it's Saturday, Friday night, Florida, you, you, ha you have to have that same mentality. And, and, and good teams and, and top-level District 1 teams and uh, top-tier teams in our league, they, they don't take plays off or games off. And I think we kind of learned a lesson that day that, you know, you, you got to play your full 32 minutes. All right, Coach, good stuff right there. Uh, you want to take a, a little trip down memory lane, check out Florida again. Since we're back here in the cold, they're saying a little snow here later today. We'll go feel the Florida vibe here in a little bit. We'll right? go 2019 on them, Coach. All right, 2019. Yeah. All right, make sure you stay tuned through the commercial break, and we'll look back at Springford's trip to Florida. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnies. She started helping me a little bit like me. I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. 
find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Courtside. I'm your host, John Bren, with the head coach, Chris Talley. All right, Chris, um, you guys had a fun little trip, but business at the same same yeah. stage. Uh, you guys went to Florida, played three games down there. Uh, not your first away trip. You guys have actually gone to California in the past. You've been to Florida in the past. Um, talk about the trip. I know you just, everybody saw the record was one yeah. and two, but you know there's more of these trips than just playing basketball games. Before we start throwing some highlights, just talk about your impressions of the trip. Yeah, it um, it's something we like to do every other year. Um, it's you know some of the kids coming through the program. It's it's one of the things they get excited for that they know. All right, if, if I make varsity and, and I work hard, at, at some point I'm going to get to travel, whether it's mm -hmm. Florida, California, wherever the next trip may be. But it, it's one of those things that uh, the kids know that if they put in the time, at some point they're going to be rewarded. And um, this year was, was a travel year, and, and we decided to go to Orlando, but uh, the universal side of Orlando. Universal, yeah. okay. Now, did you make your way to the Magical Kingdom at all too during this trip, or it was all universal yeah, no, sites? Yeah, th the whole package was universal. Was universal, and, and it, it feels like it's uh, it, it's a divide down there. You're either one or the other. Okay. So we uh, you tried the universal this time. We did, and I think the kids enjoyed it better. It was probably more age age appropriate. Okay. For them, and um, it seemed like the rides were were a little bit better too. Oh, okay, and all right. It, it wasn't as crowded. And you guys made it back here to Pennsylvania for the Christmas holiday then too, right? Yep. We came back on the... 22nd, you? early. Okay. Early nice. flight. Six, six, 6.50 flight. Oh, that's yeah. an early wake-up call for yeah. you guys. Yeah. Everybody made the flight? Yeah, we got on, uh, no delays, and we got back to Pennsylvania, and I think the kids then realized, oh, we, we have the rest of the day. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it was nice. All right, so you played three teams down there. The first team you played from Utah, does that yeah, sound right? It, it was uh, Copper Hills. Copper Hills, Utah. Utah. Right. And you guys lost this game, first we did. game out there. Yeah, they were um, very good. Okay. They had, I think, from what I saw, the best player uh, from In our, your bracket in or our, whatever? I think in our bracket. They weren't, uh, they didn't win our bracket, but the, I think they had the best player from our bracket. Okay. Let's, I think we got some highlights here. Who, yeah. Copper Hill, right? Copper Hill. So yeah. They're in the white. Yes. And, and they, um, you know, when, when I looked them up prior to the trip, they're a team that has a lot of success year in and year out. Okay. They're, they're constantly in state playoffs. Um, it, it looks. Is it like a comparable size school to coach? Or you don't yeah. even know about that? Yeah. Okay. They're, they're a little bit bigger, if you can believe, believe that. Okay. Yeah, really? they are. Um, but they they compete at, at a high level. When when I was looking at some of the games they played last year, some of the venues that they play in for the state tournament looked looked awesome. Okay. Um, I don't know if they were like col like colleges or whatever. They were huge arenas, so you could tell they were playing some important basketball late in the season for a couple years in a row. Um, but they had it was that kid there that was going up for a block. He okay. Probably 6'4". Um, Playing the center of their zone there? Yeah, but okay. just a, a coach's dream. like Athletic, it, could shoot skilled, it. Skilled, you know, up and unders, and just fundamentally really, really good. Um, no, shot, no shot clock looks like down there in Florida. Yeah, no. Same rules here, eight-minute quarters, same everything, right? Yep, three referee crew. Um, and you're playing in a convention center down there too, right? Yeah. Now, is there like a main court or all every court's like this? No, every court is like that. Okay. So it's just a huge convention hall with a temporary floor, and they just split it up into... They put in these uh, extension baskets yeah. or whatever, and everybody plays basketball. Yep, and there's like 10 games going on at a time. There's 45 whistles going on. Just keep playing and, until they tell you to stop. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you lose the first game, and then you go back into the bracket, and you play a team from Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Greater Latrobe. Is that Greater right? Latrobe, yeah. Now I'm going to ask you a trivia question. I'm putting you on the spot. What famous golfer called Latrobe his home? Uh, I would have to go with, um, is was it uh, not Arnold Palmer? You should have said that one. That's was the, it Arnold yeah, Palmer? Yeah, it's Arnold Palmer. Yeah, he's from okay. Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Who were you thinking? Uh, Who I, was going to be your second guy? For game? whatever reason, Tom Watson was coming to mind. Yeah, no, he's but, not the right. Yeah, you had it right with Arnold Palmer yeah. from Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Latrobe. 
Beautiful area out there. Yeah. Uh, we they got some great golf courses out there, too. Out there in Latrobe. Latrobe Country Club, Laurel okay. Valley, great spots out there. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't. You didn't talk about the head coach. You guys didn't talk any. No, golf. we did. We, oh, really? We, he's a nice guy. We had, he had some roots down here. We, we knew some similar people. Uh, but but we didn't talk about the golf courses. Uh, okay. Had I did, I would have told him about you know your home course. Yeah, that, we could or we could have played a you know maybe a <coughs> trip out there again and played them like in summer basketball or something like that and found our way onto a golf course out there. Yeah, or and then I'm sure you guys contact. You'll you'll get a hold of them. You'll you'll talk some golf with this. Guy. And then you take me to the cricket club yeah, yeah, and then we'll absolutely yeah that's, yeah yeah it's how it works. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, the, uh, another good program. Uh, they've had a lot of success the last six years. Um, now you're in the white, they're in the orange here. Yep, same floor. And, uh, and you win this game. <clears throat> yes. They, uh, they lost a, a, a really talented senior class. Last year. Yeah. Okay. And talking to him for, for six years, they had a, a pretty good run up there with a lot of uh, uh, PIAA appearances. And there's Scrocky again. You've seen here a little bit in the highlights, too. We talked yep. about him. Yep. Scrocky has been uh, that consistent piece all year. Um, and, and that was a perfect highlight from him. There's another There's one. An, is it in Latrobe 6A in Pennsylvania or 5A? Do you know what division they are? They are 5A this year, I okay. think, is their first year. From, They're back and forth between? <clears throat> yeah. He okay. said last year they were the smallest 6A team in the state. Okay. But they're, they're uh, you know, it seems like a, a nice district. Uh, he's a good coach. Good like guy, he, yeah. Yeah, he, good. he knows what he's doing. They had a couple... And you guys, and you, you were happy with how you played here in this game too, right? Yeah, I thought we uh, we were able to to defend, which which we didn't do a good job of. And they're trying to cause some pressure, kind of like you do a little bit, looks like too, right? Yeah, they played very similar to us. Uh, they changed their defenses up a lot. They moved the ball really well. Um, they're scrocky again. Mm. Yeah, he's uh, like I said, he's probably the the one player that that people don't talk about enough or, or realize how, how much of an impact he's had on yeah, the yeah. season. Yeah. There's Medeiros uh, finishing there with a, a nice left hand inside. Up. He likes the left hand. He does. And uh, a nice high low from Kovaleski there. All right, you guys, one more. Then you're playing the next day, right? You're yeah. playing day after day today. And the third team, they were from? St. Thomas Moore, Louisiana. Oh, OK. Near? Uh, a suburb of Lafayette. OK. And that game obviously didn't go well either. Now it's also yeah. like get away. It's almost kind of like that getaway game a little bit out there. But obviously you guys didn't have your best here against them either. Yep, we're in the Road Blues, and uh, I don't know if you can see their coach on the on the sideline with the holiday sweater. Oh, uh, blue like a light blue sweater. Looks <coughs> like there. Excuse me, coach. Yeah, he um, he came up to us before the game. Real, real friendly, energetic coach. And uh, first thing you notice when talking to him is a. Uh, pretty large size ring on his finger. Okay. So Coach Puffco inquired about that immediately because it, you know, it, it stood out. You're not out. wearing your holiday gear, it looks like there. I didn't have the holiday sweater on. Okay. Or the holiday tie. <laughs> that lit up. Um, <clears throat> and then after talking to him, uh, these guys are a private school in Louisiana, obviously. And they were back-to-back -back state champs. Oh, okay. So this, he was wearing a state ring is what you're saying. That's what the ring was all about. Gotcha. So they, uh, I think they play at like the what would be equivalent to our, our 4 or 5A level. It okay. Was, it was kind of hard to, to figure that out. But, you know, regardless of what level, what state, if you're back-to-back -back state champs. So this is one of those games where, hey, they're going to win their games down in Louisiana. So I know you lost, but it, it's still kind of mini helps. It can help your – power ranking a little bit because you're losing to a team that's going to win, you know, probably 16 games or something like that during the year. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. Coming into that game, they had already played 12 games. Oh, really? And uh, he, he said that they are allowed to play up to 34 regular season games. What? Yeah. That's crazy. So to your point, you know, that got my wheels spinning. I'm like, how many, how many games do you think you, can, you could win this year? He's like, I, I think we could win 20, 26 or 27. <laughs> so, and you're like, go ahead, go win as many as you want. And that's what I said. I said, keep, keep winning, you know, win or lose, it, it, it won't kill us. So 
uh, you, that might come into play down the road where, you know. You, you, you might have somebody here from Pennsylvania be like, hey, how's this team, you know, they beat Springford helping them out in their rankings. How is that equitable? But I would also say, you know, we also took a loss. So, so yeah, to, right, and you're playing a private school down yeah. there then, too, right? So, um, yeah, that's something to keep an eye on. Coach. All right, we'll watch it as the season progresses yeah. here. All right, like you said, we're halfway through the season right here, and we got halfway through the season with your uh, coming back here to Pennsylvania, playing two league games and, uh, yeah. and a really big non-conference. But they got to stay to hear about them, all right? You got it, Coach. All right, we're going to take one more quick commercial break, and we will review the games with Potts Grove, Elwin J. Roberts, and Penridge. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in. Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Welcome back to Courtside. I'm your host, John Brennan, with the head coach, Chris Talley. All right, coach here, uh, last segment here, a lot, a lot of games. And really, after this trip, what you guys needed, you had a 3-0 and week, yeah. two league wins, and a huge non-league on-the-road win at Penridge out there. Yes. So talk about, like, before we did the games, that week. And I saw there was a quote in paper, like, we're going to find out what type of team we are here yeah. coming up. So talk about that week for you guys. It was a, a huge week. It, you know, it, it was still early in the season, but at the same point, it wasn't. You know, at, at that point, we're midway through the schedule, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we told the kids, you know, our schedule's tough. We know it's tough. It's tough for a reason. Um, but also, we, got, we have to start closing some of these close games. And if, if you want to be, you know, considered for um, – a good district seed like you got to beat some of the good district teams and and we weren't able to do that so um we started off with uh what what was it owen jay potsgrove I mean, yeah the potsgrove it was like the first day back from break too yeah right does that sound right it was a weird monday you know yeah yeah another, something like that another it was, it was still over break it was before it was. the new year's yeah now we're talking right right before new year's it was a monday you went down the potsgrove and you found a way to win and Potsgrave struggled a little bit this year, too, but it doesn't matter. You know, like, yeah. you still got to find a way to win. You haven't played since Florida, too, right? So right. what's fresh in their heads is the Florida trip where they're one and two, and they went to Potsgrave and really responded. For yeah, them, we had a bunch of days off, you know, and, and then a lot of practices without a game. So it, it was good to, to be able to work in some things and get some shots up and, and, and not just play three games in a row. So, uh, yeah, here's – the game at Pottsgrove, again, out of our routine on a Monday night, Coach, we're in, we're in the road Over the blues. break, yeah, right, everything. And uh, you Here know, you go, ball side to side, really big emphasis point for you this year. Yeah, not this year, every year. I think, you know, I mentioned it a lot, Coach Puffko, that's, that's one of those things. We all have our thing, that's his. You know, that ball, when side it goes. Side to side. Yep, who's that in the corner? Is that Five, the Fitz Fitzgerald? was. Fitzgerald. And then uh, I think Medeiros in there, so. Yeah, this this was a, a nice uh, win for us. We, uh, you know, first quarter it was it was closely contested. I think we had a little bit of rust and a little fatigue, and then that got the, your legs under you. Yeah, they're scrocky in the corner. Um, yeah, the second, third, and fourth quarter, we we really moved the ball and and turned the pressure up a little bit. And I think that was Cressley there. Nice, nice thing. drive by Kovaleski. Big block here coming up. You can see it. Yeah, that was Medeiros, I believe. Here you are running your little inbound stuff, gets him on the lob. Yeah, that was uh, that was at the buzzer, uh, maybe to go into the half. Okay. Yeah. Steal. Yeah. Nice. Kovaleski. And looks like Scrocky there coming in. Oh, that's Kovaleski. 
I think the the defensive uh, was the highlight okay, there, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, and and that's that's something Pat is working on, and he's uh, Pat Pat is like this close from being a 16 to 18 point scorer. He's just got to finish laps like that, and that that's something he's he's really worked on the past couple of weeks. And um, uh, it was in what I forget which game one of the reporters was talking to me, and 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 I said it, Pat. Pat's best basketball is still ahead of him. Yeah. He, he doesn't realize how impactful he can be right now. So. And I think you saw that impact in that Owen J. Roberts game where Kovaleski yeah. just single-handedly was like putting you guys on your back out there. He was able to score the basketball, play some defense out there. But it was trip after trip. I think it was like the second quarter where he scored yeah. uh, double-digit points, 14 points or something like that for you, and really kind of started to get some separation for you in this game. Yeah, I think that queued up the, the highlights mm -hmm. here and, and – uh, You'll probably there he is from the outside making a three. Yeah, you'll see a heavy dose of Kovaleski because he um, he was he was fantastic in this game. But um, you know everybody was defensively. There's that Scrocky with the drive again right there. Yep, the mid range and then steal. Is that Scrocky on the yeah. steal? And uh, yeah, I think I think defensively this this was certainly one of our better games. There's another little out of bounds play for Kovaleski there. Yeah, and. Turnover. Got a lot of turnovers against this O&J Roberts. Getting a lot of pressure against him. But there you go. There's a layup. Contested layup, but opportunity for you to score a bucket, you know, inside. Was that Kovaleski? I don't know who missed it, but I'm saying you get a turnover, you get an opportunity at the rim. You got to finish those. Yeah, runs. and that's uh, – Fits from the corner, looks like there maybe. Yeah, that I think that was Kovaleski from okay. the corner. Um, yeah, and that you, you make a great point. You get a turnover. Here's your turnover. Let's see what we do. If charge, going the other way. Yeah. Doesn't so, come to the jump stop. Barrels over the guy. Good call. Yeah, and that's but a good, great turnover. Now you got converted the points the other end. Right, and, and that's something that drives coaches crazy. Like you do the hard part. There's Fitz from the corner. Miss, but you got the turnover there. Yeah, that you get the turnover, but then what do you do with it? Right. Um, luckily, we didn't turn it over because the turnover to turnover thing is is something that loses basketball games, but. Um, I think the common theme when, when we kind of wrap this whole thing together is is consistency on that end of the court. Right, and you, here's what I'm going to say. Coach speak a little bit. I watch yeah. a lot. I see a lot of, like, ball up here. You see a little bit. You want to see the ball more in that, as Coach Caldwell would say, that triple threat position a little bit. I see, you know, sometimes we're up here with the ball. I'm sure you see it a little bit, too, when you watch the film a little bit out there then, too, right? Yeah, I mean, fundamentally from, you know, all aspects, we, we definitely need to improve. But, but when I say consistency, I'm talking about at the rim. Like gotcha. we're, we're getting the hard part done and getting to the rim, and we're just not finishing plays when it's little to no contact. And we're going to see a highlight right here coming up right here from the Penridge game where you do finish at the rim. This is where you want to play. This is a huge win for you guys on the road here, and this is still going the other way for you guys. Yeah, I think the quote you're referring to was this game where – Finishing that, at the rim. That's how you finish, and, and Scrocky's dad there – could anticipate that coming. I don't know if you saw him. Yeah, he's up before it's going there. Yep, he sees it. Yep, and that's uh, that's Jake Cressley um, in a in a huge part of the game too. It wasn't like yeah, it's second half because he's going your way too, right? Yeah, yeah, second half the as as Zumoff would say, the guts of the game, coach. <laughs> and uh, you know he he just caught it in transition and and went up and and I think we were talking earlier he got his his shot blocked pretty pretty handily early right. in the game and I think you know the message was you got to take it up strong and, and finish and, and that's a huge win for you guys going there because yeah. you've had a lot of battles with Penn Road, kind of like that CB West you played yeah. them a lot and that's a huge win for you guys good momentum builder as you go into uh basically all you have left here is pack play the rest of the year yeah that's that uh, you know a team coming off of a, a state runner final yeah, state, yeah you right. know, now it's a different team but his expectations are the same he he does a, a great job with that team, and, and they're always some of the toughest kids that you're, you're going to play, play against. Yeah. So for us to go down there and, and get a win and play the way we did, you know, we just hope that could be a springboard to, to the rest of the season. All right, Coach. Well, whew, that was a lot right there. I'm tired. I'm Time for a nap, I think. For yeah, me. I think uh, – you know, we gave the people what they wanted, and, and I think next week it'll be a little bit less chaotic. we got to get the highlight guy. Make sure he gets the, get, makes the highlight guy. He's got to get the stuff in before for, uh, for viewing time because I know there's a lot of people out there waiting for 
Yeah. When's the show coming out, right? Right. What's What's next? So what's we'll next? we'll tighten things up here in 2020. All right, coach. Well, best of luck to you Thank and this you. crew this week. All right. Thank you. All right. Make sure you tune in next week as we'll recap the games with Perky and Valley, Phoenixville, and whoever else the Rams are playing this week out there. For the head coach Chris Talley, I'm John Brain. See you next time, courtside.